Good morning, everyone. I hope everybody is having a great weekend. Today is Sunday, July 25th. My name is Kyle, and you have reached my cross-stitching channel, Stitching and Sound. It's been a couple of weeks since my last video. Um, had some stuff going on, just haven't had time to record, but I am here. I've got a, I've got some time to record today. I don't know how much time, um, but luckily it should be a sh shortish video. Lucky for me, anyway, because I got some stuff to do today. But I hope everybody is well. I hope everybody is safe. I hope everybody had a safe holiday. I don't. Even, when was the last time I made a video? It's been a. a it was in June, right? I don't remember. But um, I just want to start off by saying that the last time I had a video, um, it completely slipped my mind what day it was. No, it was in June because uh, I've been officially doing floss tube for three years as of this past June. So, um, does not feel like three years. It honestly feels like it's been longer than three years, but nope. I started floss tube in June of 2018. I was still living in my old apartment, which less said about that time is the better. Um, but yeah, it's been, an, I've only, I, this is what, 37. So I'm sure if I wouldn't have taken all of last year off, I would have, uh, Definitely had more than 37, 38 videos, but it's been a great journey these past three years. Um, might have some updates to the channel itself to announce at the end of this video, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, which will be at the end. But um, I wanted to just start off because I, this is, Everybody in the cross stitch community knows this because it was such a devastating blow to the community. Uh, the passing of Barb Adams from Blackbird Designs. Uh, very sudden, very, very tragic um, uh, news to the community. Um, so thoughts and well wishes go out to Barb and her family. Um, as well as her friend Alma, who's, um, her, who was her partner in Blackbird Designs. Um, I feel like everybody has said, um, basically everything that needs to be said about Barb and her impact to the community. Um, so I would recommend watching Carol Saltbuck Stitcher and Brenda and Laura's videos going over Blackbird Designs, because... I mean, between the two of those channels, I mean, they, they they have said and shown everything that needs to be said and shown regarding um, Blackbird Designs and Barb and her impact to the community. Um, I never went to a retreat where I was able to meet Barb, but just based on stories, um, it sounds like she was one of the greatest out there. So um, go check out... Carol Saltbox and Brenda Laura's videos on that. So, um, before we get into all the stitching, a uh, little segment I haven't done um, in quite some time is what I've been listening to. Um, since the last video, um, I have been listening to two new people to me. They're definitely not new as far as their music goes. Um, first person that I've been listening to a lot of, her name is, uh, Lori Anderson, right? Let me just make sure. I, let me just make sure. See, that's how new she is to me, because I don't know if I'm even, um, it's either Lori or Laura. Lori Anderson. I was right the first time. Um, she is a very experimental artist. I'll say that much. Um, my cousin tagged me on Facebook in a YouTube video from one of her albums. Um, and I was, uh, blown away. Um, 
in a confusing way. <laughs> I was very confused. Um, but uh, I listened to her first two albums, which are Big Science and Mr. Heartbreak. Um, very good albums. I kind of like Mr. Heartbreak more than Big Science because it's not as confusing to me. Um, but then one weekend, uh, <laughs> I had a lot of downtime and Lori Anderson has a, I think it's over five hours long, um, of an art performance called United States Live. I listened to all of that in one go with a hour and a half intermission, uh, because I need to give my mind a break. That was, uh, so, um, if you're into the fun, weird stuff, I would recommend listening to Lori Anderson, um, which I'm actually surprised I've never heard of her before. Uh, which I found out she was actually married to Lou Reed um, for about a decade or so, give or take. Um, so, and I've listened to Lou Reed plenty of times. So I'm sure in my research of doing Lou Reed in the past, I probably come across her name. It just never stuck. The other person, or the other group, rather, <clears throat> that I've been listening to a lot of um, is the Cocteau Twins, which... Um, I was immediately hooked. Um, my friend Emily came down to visit and I introduced her to Susie and the Banshees. Um, quick shout out to Trixie Tricycle, um, who's also like a lover of Susie and the Banshees. At least that one song. Um, but I showed my friend Susie and the Banshees and she's like, oh, they sound a lot like the Cocteau Twins. So she showed me she had me listen to Heaven or Las Vegas by the Cocteau Twins, which is um, an amazing song and an ama amazing album. Um, and after doing some research, they, at least in their early days, drew inspiration from Susie and the Banshees. So um, I would listen to their album, Heaven or Las Vegas. I binged all of their albums in one sitting um, a couple of weekends ago. Definitely would listen to Heaven or Las Vegas, the album, as well as um, Head Over Heels. Um, I really like that album because it's a little bit darker. It's got more punch to it. Um, the other album that seems to be their most famous album outside of Heaven or Las Vegas is their album Treasure, which um, is a great album. Um, I don't like it as much as uh, Head Over Heels, uh, but... Um, I would just listen to them. They're great. I, I've been playing them nonstop on repeat. The other band I've been listening to, and I know I've mentioned them before, is a band called Wolf Alice. And I don't... I love Wolf Alice. <laughs> um, I've been eagerly waiting for the release of their new album uh, since 2017. Uh, 2017 is when they came out with their Visions of a Life album, which won the Mercury Prize uh, the following year. Um, so I've been I've been waiting for them to release it, and uh, their new album Blue Weekend came out a couple of weekends ago. I've been playing that nonstop. Um, it's probably their best album to date. They've only got three albums, but um, I love it. I had to get it on vinyl because um, I am a hardcore fan. Um, this has already been nominated for the Mercury Prize, so it'll be interesting to see if they win it twice, um, which only one person has done that before, PJ Harvey, which I love PJ Harvey. Um, but yeah, very great album, and it's a pretty short album. I think it's only about 38, 40 minutes, but definitely check this out. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been listening to a lot of as far as music goes. Um, I got quick shout outs and then we can get to the stitching. Uh, first shout out is for Becca from Sambri Stitches. Um, if you have not seen, um, I did an interview with her for her interview with a floss tube series that was released about two weekends ago. I will link it below if you want to go see. Um, it was a very great interview. I personally myself have not watched it because I don't watch anything with myself in it, hence why I never edit my videos. Um, but it was a fun interview. It went about an hour-ish, give or take. Um, but yeah, it was a great 
great interview. We talked about, you know, the usual questions she asked, but then also went into depth about my hiatus from floss tube for uh, the last year or so. Um, yeah, I would go check it out and check out all of her videos. She also recently reached 5k subs, so congrats, Becca. Uh, next shout out, uh, someone who I, she's definitely not new, um, but she's newer to me just because, um, there was a lull where I wasn't watching Floss Tube for a long time. Um, and then when I started back up, I started watching her, um, and that's Michelle Mama Loves You GB. Um, I love watching her. Um, I did give her a podcast because she mentioned she, uh, whenever she hears cryptids, that's, that's her jam. So I suggested in one of her videos to start listening to the last podcast on the left. And I just, before I started recording, just finished her video, her new video anyway. And she, uh, mentioned me and that, um, she started listening to that and it sounds like she likes it. Um, so I'm getting her, giving her a shout out. Uh, she's very fun to watch. I love her. Um, uh, what was I going to say? If you guys watch last podcast on the left, I would recommend starting not with the first 100 episodes, just because those really early episodes, there is some language usage that might be offensive to some people. I mean, they swear. I mean, they swear a lot, but, um, there is a certain word that a lot of people find offensive that they kind of used a lot of in the early days, but as the podcast went on, they stopped using that. They, they, as they mentioned in, I don't know, episode like 200 or something, they grew up from those early episodes. So they, they're, they don't, they don't use, you know, any sort of terminology that would be offensive. So just heads up if you guys decide to dive into that. Um, and then my last shout out is, I know I've talked about her before, but Betsy Klager, I uh, love her dearly. She just reached 2K subs. Also just want, I'm wanting to give her a shout out because um, last couple of weekends I've been talking with her a lot just about stuff and floss tube. So, um, uh, and we've, we've been having some really good deep conversations on stuff like that, so. So that's a personal shout out as well as a congratulatory shout out to Betsy Klager. She is hilarious. Please go watch her. Okay. We can finally get to the stitching. 12 minutes in, right on track, I think. Um, Y'all, I had a major finish. I major finish. Um, I actually got this finished couple of weeks quicker than I thought I would. Um, I took a week off from work last week and I finished it. And y'all know, now at least you know what I'm talking about. Let's see if I can back up here. To... I did not iron it, um, but this, my friends, is Ada Hazlam. This is an English reproduction sampler from Samplers Revisited. I know that has been agonizing for some of you to know who or what this is. Um, some of you did figure it out, and I appreciate those people that did figure it out to not um, spoil the surprise. Um, but um, what I just love about this sampler is all of the amazing colors. I mean, especially this um, nice turquoise color that you see just strewn out through this thing. Um, story about this was when Michelle Bendy was doing her D-stash sales on Instagram, this was one of them, and I had never seen this sampler before. And what got me, and the reason I jumped on it right away, was not because of all the fun motifs and the beautiful colors, which obviously you can tell it has, but the, I mean, it's not even a verse, it's just a demand to fear God and honor the king. And 
specifically the fear God part, which this is all one over one, um, it just sounded so metal. And I'm like, whoever this, there's no year on it, unfortunately. I think, um, I don't know if I mentioned, but it's by Samplers Revisited. I think that, let me see if I, they don't give a specific date just because there isn't one on the sampler. But um, Ada stitched this colorful sampler shortly after Queen Victoria's death in 1901. Uh, many of the motifs are from Encyclopedia of Needlework by Teresa de Dillmont, 1886. Interesting. Interesting. So, <clears throat> definitely um, early 1900s, obviously. Um, I just wish there was a more specific year. Because um, we don't know how old she is. I want. I also want to know, because the cover picture is of the model, I want to know what the antique looks like. Um, but yeah, once I saw the Fear God on there, I'm like, I would love to have a sampler that just is so metal sounding. So I got it, and um, I stitched it with the called for NPI silks. Um, I think there was about 25-ish, 26 uh, MPI silks. Um, I stitched it two over two, and this is on 37 count Wild Honey from Legacy Lemon. Now, <clears throat> I know what you're saying. That sounds really bulky. Uh, yes, it, as it should. But I just love the boldness that the two over two on a 36, 37 count looks. Um, every project that I do that's on a 36 count, I start it with one strand, I immediately rip it out because I do not like the coverage. Um, I will say though, they overestimated how much floss you need. <laughs> because I'm assuming that the model was stitched with one strand of MPI silks, but there are a couple of colors that they call for multiple skeins of um, that even with me using two uh, strands, um, I either didn't use the second skein or I never felt like I was going to run out. Um, so it's possible they might have stitched the model in two. It doesn't really say, but I'm assuming it's for one over one or one over two. Um, so just be aware, you know, I, I think you'll be fine just buying one skein of everything. It calls for three skeins of the black NPA silk, which... Um, I only use one and a half skeins of, so if you want to stitch this, it is not out of print. Um, you can still find it as far as I'm aware. Uh, Sampler is revisited. Um, it's still on their site, I believe. So, I mean, it's for sale. I can even link them below once I confirm. But yes, Ada Hazlem, Sampler is revisited. Um, my favorite motif to stitch was this thing. I don't know what it's supposed to be, but I love it. And if somebody can figure out what these two animals are supposed to be, I don't know what I don't know what the hell they are. <laughs> I'm assuming they're dogs, but um, the tails seem to be longer than what a dog's tail would be. So it's possible that they are also monkeys. They might be possums. Um, now, if this were a Spanish sampler, I would assume that it'd be a chupacabra. But, um, I don't know. So, this is going away. I don't know when I'm going to get this framed. Um, if I'll get it framed anytime soon, but... But yeah, that is the big... That's the big... That's the big one right there. Also... I don't have them with me, but I've had two finishes that I've had to keep a secret for over a year. Um, and that is that I did the models for two of Nora Corbett's uh, smaller designs under the Nora Corbett name um, that were released uh, about, a, I think they were re released the 1st of July. Um, but they are part of the Zodiac series. It's a new series that she's starting. Um, I stitched Cancer and gotta remember the other one, Virgo. Those were the two that were released. Um, I don't have the charts in my hand, so I can't give you 
a picture. If I do editing to this, I'll maybe tack them in on the end just because I don't want to break up the video because that's more editing and more room for error, which I don't want. Um, but I will post a link to, um, I guess I'll go, I'll, um, I'll post a link where you can find them. Or you can go to my Instagram. I, I do have the models posted on there. You can go to my Instagram. It is below. Please give me a follow. Um, but yeah, those were fun to stitch. Um, very quick to stitch. Um, I, I just had to keep them a secret for a year and a half. And I have one more model that is waiting to be released because I was sent three. Uh, but that's all I can say. So that's that. Um, so what have I been working on since this finish? Well, I, um, <clears throat> I, the first thing I worked on once, um, I finished Ada Hazelum was, uh, Just Nan's Octagonal Peacock. I'll just show you. Um, and I actually finished what they call the front of the needlebook. I just don't have any of the embellishments attached. Um, and then I started here the back. So what this is supposed to be for is for a needle case, um, or needlebook rather. I'm not going to do that because I, I have no need for that. I mean, it'd look pretty but I just have, <laughs> I have no need to just have a needle case. So what I'm actually going to end up doing is um, turning this into well, plans um, to turn this into a pillow. I think that'd be fun. I think it'd be cute just as a little display. Um, that's what it's supposed to look like. I got the peacock charm. Um, but yeah, so I got that finished. This is stitched on 28 count. Um, French, uh, country French blue linen, um, uh, and a, a tip for somebody who's wanting to start a Just Nan design, I would, especially if it comes with a specialty charm like this one does, it comes with a peacock charm, highly, rec you can change the color of the fabric, but I would highly recommend, um, stitching it in the called for count um like this is in a 28 count linen um and there's just there is just enough room for the charm if you go to like a 32 count you're going to be squeezing it and if you go to a 36 or lower i mean there's just gonna be no room it's gonna look awkward so highly recommend if there is a specialty charm that comes with the just nan embellishments that you do the called for um count but let's say you get the chart and there's no embellishments attached, but you find a charm that kind of looks like the one that would have been included. Uh, then that's when you can start playing with sizes and all that. So, so yeah, there's that. And then one other thing I have been working on that I, oh, well, two things actually. Um, I pulled out my Scarlet from uh, crossstitchingart.com is the name of the designer. I pulled her out because I wanted to stitch on something that wasn't a sampler or just, a, you know, a motify design. Uh, so I pulled her out and here's where I am. The fabric is bluer than what is showing up. Uh, on the camera, it looks a little bit gray, but it, there is, it is bluer. Um, from the last time I showed it, I think I just had the bust done, um, as well as part of her, whatever this supposed to be. So I finished that and then obviously did her skin. Um, change of pace for me was that I, um, stitched her skin two over two rather than one over one. Um, since this is not a Mirabilia, um, I wanted to kind of test the waters on how I felt about the two over two with the skin and it looks great. Um, will I do this for my further mirrors? Probably not. Um, but crossstitchingart.com has a lot of beautiful designs. Um, I, I would say this one is one of their more 
regal looking designs like she's very proper but they've also got like fantasy designs um and some other stuff so i'll link them below they've got some really good designs on there uh 30 i think i said it was i know i said it was um no stitching this on 32 count um the called for is dove gray but i went with something else and i don't have it written down i think it's like a dusty dusty blue something or another i don't know but yeah so i just wanted to get her skin stitched and then i'm going to put that away um for a little bit i don't know when i'll get back to that but i just wanted to see what she would look like once i got her skin finished um the last thing i've been working on i actually haven't taken it out of my lower yet has been the owl forest embroidery um alice in wonderland mystery sal um i wanted to get part two finished before i started filming but it is what it is. So, I mean, not much has changed. And unfortunately, I didn't want to take it out of the cue stamp because I do plan on working on this right after we get done. But I did finish the roses and there is a little bit of, of a border that goes down here. Um, and I did start um, the top for part two. I hope to get this finished today um, for that. Um, I am using the specially dyed Owl Force Embroidery Threads. Um, this is stitched on 36 count Luna from Color and Cotton. I cannot hype Color and Cotton's fabrics up enough. I think they've got, they probably have my favorite hand dyed, I would say, is Color and Cotton. Um, but yeah. Oh, and one change that I did make, um, is with these roses. Um... On the chart, the roses on the bottom are both white and the roses on the top are both the red. It, it, it was bothering me from the first time I saw that because I thought it would look much better as if each adjacent corner was the same color. So I've got the white roses down here. I will change this one up here to also be white. And then I change this bottom one to the red roses and then the red rose will stay the same up here. So I just think it'll look better visually that way. Um, but yeah, this might, this will probably be my focus piece for the next couple of weeks, just because I do want to get as caught up as possible. Um, they've already released part eight. I don't know. I don't know what part they released. All I know is I'm behind and I need to get caught up on it. So, um, yeah, if you guys want to join, it is free. So all you'll have to do is kit it up. So when you don't, they give conversion for DMC. So um, if you don't want to use the Owl Force embroidery threads and don't want to wait three months like I did, um, then you can kit up yourself. So Okay. Stash. I do have a little bit of haul. Um, uh, let's see here. Let's just start from, let's start with the ones that I know I haven't shown. Um, <clears throat> so I was on Stash Unloading and I found this sampler from the Needles Praise. It's called the Golden Acorn Sampler. And you know, with Darlene Osteen's passing, I don't necessarily want to try to stock up on all of the needle praises stuff because some of the stuff does go fairly high um but if i'm browsing a stash unloading or I'm, I'm on ebay and i do see a needles praise design that i don't have i'm gonna i'm gonna pick it up just because i i really don't know you know what the needles praise holds as far as what their future is but um this is the golden acorn sampler it is a multi-stitch sampler and let me see, I looked at this chart and I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what any of those stitches are. Um, so let's see here. There's a double back stitch variation, satin, double, oh, queen stitch is the one that I've never done before. And then there's also a chain stitch, but um, it's not a big sampler. I it, The chart is all on one page. Um, 
which I thought it was much bigger than what it's actually going to be. Um, I think the instructions are actually more confusing than the chart because they've got a lot of instructions going on. Um, oh, and then, like, these are just, like, I mean, there's ones on, there's stitches on here that aren't even, like, that have names for them. So that's going to be fun to try to figure out. When will I get to that? I don't know. Don't know. Probably not anytime soon. Um, <laughs> I need to finish my Berlin wool work sampler first before I think of starting another needles praise thing. <sighs> okay. Then, th okay. I To pull from Brenda and Laura, I about had an H and H when I saw this chart on Stash Unload because this is one that I've seen... And no, I have wanted, but it has been for astronomical pricing. Um, but I was on Stash Unload, and the, the, the seller was selling it for $2, brand new. And I about crapped my pants. Um, and I wasn't even the first comment. After I commented, the, the kind soul who commented first saying, I will pass it on to Kyle. And I'm like, oh, I love you so much. Okay. But it is Legends of the Dragons. And this is this was a collaborative piece with Black Swan, Dragon Dreams, and Teresa Wensler. So um, here's the Black Swan Dragon, um, the Dragon Dreams Dragon, and then uh, Teresa Wensler's Dragon. There is another design like this um, that has three wizards, um, which I'm still on the hunt for. Hopefully I can get that eventually, but... Um, yeah, I, I've been eyeing this one for a while, and I'm glad I have it in my hands. Once again, lots of blended threads, and that goes for all, all of them. So, um, yeah, I was very excited to get that. And then, also on Stash Unload, I, my next pieces of haul are all Teresa Winsler. There's only three of them. Um was one I've never seen before, and I wouldn't be surprised if this was, like, published in a magazine and I already have it. Uh, but this is Rose Tree in Bloom. Look how fun that is. Um, sorry for the glare. I just don't want to take it out of the packaging right now. Um, I don't think I'll be stitching this anytime soon, but it's not one that when I saw it rang any bells that I had it in my stash, so I had to get it. Um, I did, I did peek at the chart, and once again, lots of blends, as is to be expected from a Teresa Winsler. Um, and then, now, I know I've shown at least one of these before, I don't remember which one it is, I, and there's even the high possibility that I, um, showed them both and don't remember, but, um, I'm pretty sure it was this one that I've shown. Maybe. Um, this was one that I was looking for for a while. This is the Minstrel. Um, I don't remember if I got this off of eBay or not. I just have it now. Um, look at the dragon. He's very content with listening to this lovely Minstrel play his loot. Um... I would love to start that one whenever I get done with um, The Fortunate Traveler. But um, I don't think that far ahead, especially with, especially with designs as jam-packed as Teresa Wensler. But then also, I think this is the one I didn't show, but I could also be wrong. The Princess and the Dragon. I mean, look at how cute. What I love about Teresa Winsor's dragons is that they're never... They're never, like, the bad guy. You know what I mean? I mean, not that any of the characters are the bad guy, but, like, all of her dragons are just so friendly-looking. Um, they're, they're not very menacing-looking, which I, I think is great, because, you know, dragons are usually always portrayed as these ferocious fire breathing beasts but really they're just they're just looking for some love 
<clears throat> much like all of us, just looking for some love. Um, once again, uh, Teresa Wensler patterns with dragons in them. You can't, you can't buy them anymore. Um, and that's, that's her decision, which we should respect. That's everything. I hope today was exciting for you. Um, I just don't have a lot to show. Um, so let's go into plans. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that there might be a little change to the channel. Here in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to actually have a lot of downtime. And some of the plans that I have involve tutorials. Now, I've talked before how I want to do a tutorial for, like, kidding up a Teresa Wensler or a Mirabilia. Those are in the plans. But um, while I I posted on Facebook I, just something, I think it was just like a, a picture saying, um, life's too short, discover new new hobbies or crafts or whatever. And one of my friends said, oh, if you do tutorial videos, and I will, I will make it very uh, known right now that I do not talk about my floss tube outside of floss tube. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you might have noticed that I've never posted when I have a new video. It's because I have a lot of people following me that are close friends or family that I don't really want to know I have a floss tube. Um, so that's just sort of a backstory. Um, but this person's like, yeah, if you post tutorial videos, um, I will I will start cross-stitching. So, and that, that's a person that does not know that I've got a, a YouTube video or a YouTube channel. So I have been strategically planning out a beginner's cross-stitch tutorial series. Um, and I posted on Instagram a suggestion for what are some things you would like to see um, in beginner's cross-stitch tutorials if, say, you were new to cross-stitching. What were some things you would have, would like to see in a beginner's cross-stitch tutorial video? So Got a lot of feedback on that. I've written everything down. Some of the suggestions were um, were questionable because some of them were, I don't really think that's something a beginner really needs to worry about. Um, and I won't mention what those suggestions were because I don't want to like call anybody out. Um, so yeah, those are in, in the works. Um, I'm outlining everything right now. Um, I, let's see here, in the, about two weekends here, I, I will have downtime basically the entire weekend, and I've got it all blocked off to do a couple of these tutorials, so keep an eye out for that. Um, now as far as stitching plans go, um, I already kind of mentioned that I would be doing the Alice in Wonderland uh, mystery style from Alan Forest Embroidery for the next couple of days at least, um, probably the next week, cause, just because I want to get it as caught up as possible. But I do want to get back to my Mirabilia Angel of the New Dawn, or I want to go to one of my Dimensions kits. I don't know which one I want to go to. I don't know if I want to um, either go to a Dimensions kit that's already in progress or start a new one. I'm going to be honest, and Diana, it is Kismet, is going to hate me for this, but I'm thinking of starting um, Millennium Angel. Um, I don't, I feel like I saw that this one was recently uh, reprinted in Russia, so you might be able to find some of these. I could be wrong. I might be thinking of another design. I don't know. Um, but I've been wanting this kit since... Uh, Luda from Cross Stitch with Luda finished hers a couple of well, last year sometime. Um, I was able to get this from eBay for a decent price. Um, it was it is brand new. Everything is in there. I've, I've even sorted all the floss. Um, so this might be a new start. Maybe I don't know. Um, but yeah, if you guys have suggestions, if you guys want to go back to my older videos and look at all my kits and tell me which one you want me to start, I can do that. Um, also plans, um, 
I do want to do a whip tutorial because that's pretty popular right now. Um, and I know I kind of did a whip to not whip tutorial, whip parade. Um, I kind of did a whip parade, um, my first video back in March. Um, but there's a lot of whips that I have not looked at in probably two years. That would be nice to look at and just kind of go and, um, go through those and kind of relive the feelings I had <laughs> stitching some of those older whips. Uh, that'll be fun to do. I have also want to do a kit parade slash kitted parade um, to include, you know, all of my kits and then any projects that I haven't started that I've got kitted up. would like to go through those. So those are videos you can look for here in the next couple of weeks, I would say. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. Um, for my question this week, um, please comment down below. Um, if you didn't comment on uh, my Instagram posting about what you would have liked to have seen in a beginner's cross stitch tutorial. That's kind of what I, what I want you guys to answer. If you were slash are a new cross stitcher, so there might be some of you who want to get in cross stitching and you just stumbled upon this video. Um, if you were slash are a new cross stitcher, what are some things you would want to look for or to be expected to see in a beginner's cross stitch tutorial. So I will leave it at that. Comment below. Leave multiple comments if you want. Um, go ahead and give this a like. Uh, make people aware that I exist. So share my video. Tell them to subscribe to me. All that fun stuff. I hate to sound hokey, but but yeah. So I think that's it. Um, I should see you guys. I don't think I'll have a video next weekend. Um, it depends on if I have downtime between now and next weekend, which I don't think I do. Um, but yeah, definitely some videos coming here in the next couple of weeks. I hope to get multiple films in one go just so I'm set for the next couple of weeks. So, all right. Well, you people love y'all dearly. Keep being amazing. Let those fucks fly. Say no to acid. See you next time.